You should have picked the Ouija. Just because, you know. Gotta start the thing every time. The thing is, I've played this game so many times all the way through, I swear to God I could speed, I could speed run this game. Mm -hmm. I could do all that. I think Mega Mushroom does make you a bit faster, maybe. It might not, but I think it does. I don't think it's worth it in this level. I could do all that. I could do all of that. I played through this game enough times to know what I could do and what I can't do. I think I could speed run this game. I think I can get close to the world record, honestly. It depends on what they do. It depends on what tricks they have or whatever down the line. But if there's any game that I can speed run, it's this one. Yep, I do the same. There might have been a time save there, actually, by canceling a bit earlier and getting a bit closer. Maybe not. Maybe a task could do it. Ooh, yeah, time save. There's a time save. So that's a thing that you're going to have to do, actually. Because a thing you'll notice if you if you pay attention, sliding in the shell is slightly slower than running at full speed. So you want to be outside of the shell for as long as possible. But you need the shell to get to the... To get to... Oh, to skip the level, at least. You need, you need the shell. And then do you need the shell for... What else do you need it for? Anything else? That's on point. He used the flu, right? There might have been a time save there, but... I could do all that. I could, I could, I could beat this time so far. I could I, uh, save time where he stepped on the block and be just as efficient. That's one of the things I really liked about Wii because it didn't make you stop on every level. If you held it down, you just kept on moving. Ooh. Very direct. Yep. Oh, sliding around the blue shell is going to be... You need the blue shell. You do need the blue shell to get to the warp pipe. Yeah, I forgot about that. Not the the cannon. And I, I wall jump right there too. Oh. I, I would usually do another one. I do that. Consistently hitting the bottom two, I think it might be a bit of a challenge. If I if I aim it right, yeah. Okay. That's usually how this goes. But World five and then world eight and we're done, yeah. I don't believe there's any skips in world eight. There might be a pipe. But that might be World 6 that I'm thinking of. I think my favorite world in this whole game was actually World 7. Going on a whole adventure. Oh, you're not saving, yeah. Okay, I guess if you're speedrunning, yeah. Damn, yeah, you gotta do this. Because if you're in the ball the whole time, if you're in the shell the whole time, you're gonna be a bit slower. And it adds up. Like, see, you're a bit slower. Wait. Was he in the shell? Yeah, he was, okay. There might, hmm, maybe not. Because you can let go of B and then hold B again to dash. And if you're in the air, you won't be in the shell. 
if you're doing that and you could be in the air not in the shell not sliding and you'd be like going at full speed so maybe if he jumped a bit earlier and only hit one of the snowballs he could have fell down quicker and only hit one of them and, and um or maybe he could have dodged them you know maybe it's definitely happened to me where i would not in this level but um i would run I'd get into the shell and bounce off, so that's a thing I guess you might have to watch out for. I guess you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, there ain't much of a space in this map to really get out of your shell. Okay. I never thought about doing that. Oh, there's a time save right there, a tiny bit, maybe. On point. You might have been able to run for a bit longer, pick up a bit more speed on the ground, maybe like a tiny bit before you shelled. And then uh, to the to the ghost house, right? No, the ghost house is next. Yeah. What is this What is this level? I forgot. Ah, with the uh, needle snails, I remember. Well, I never did the level like this, but I can. These are such fun enemies right here. All right. You might have been able to get out of the shell a bit earlier. You might have been able to jump a bit earlier, you know? Oh, there's RNG with that. So it might take a while for it to get to whatever level it's going to. That might be annoying. Oof. He messed up. Time save. I want to see how they optimize, like, these kinds of levels. Whoa! I've never done that. I always do with the... Oh, he messed up time save. There's definitely a time save right there. But, I, you know, there's blocks underneath it that you hit to... Can I do that? I can do that. Damn! How do you mess that up? Twice, two jumps. Yep. I love that part of the music. Might as well collect the coins, you know? You're not going anywhere. No way. Whoa, I was not expecting that. That's really good timing. That's really intelligent how he timed that. I don't know if I'd be able to, I don't know if I could, I have to memorize it wherever that was, wherever he started. There's a time save right there. Just jump over the block. Yeah, I do it the exact same way. I mean, I could probably save time actually on this level compared to what he just did. Overall, he's way better than me. But um, the little, the, the, the wall jump he did, I never thought about doing that. I, I'd mess up at certain parts. There's a lot of, I mean, going back and playing the game, it's buttons and an analog stick. It's not so, you have to be really precise with it. You have to be surprisingly precise to get this kind of movement. Damn, I, I would just stay in the shell the whole, this whole level, because the camera is really uh, uppity, this level. It's, it's disorienting the way the birds move. 
And this is the end, yeah. That was quick. That was quicker than I've ever beat this level. Maybe I could speedrun this game. I don't know if I could get world record, though. This is a really good run. Yeah, he had to stop himself right there because he went into the shell, yeah. Yeah, there might have been a time save right there. I think, yeah, there definitely was. If you could hit it faster, you might be able to maybe get to the top faster, maybe. I do it the same way. Pretty on point. Oh, and yeah, having the blue shell would be an advantage in the water. Time save. It would be an advantage in the water. Oh, that's RNG too, I think. Is he really gonna keep the blue shell the whole time? I thought it would be more efficient to not use it because you're faster running speed. Maybe he gets rid of it at some point. But then it would take a second to also get a new power up and a second to have the animation of you getting losing it. Oh, dude, this is... I've never done it this fast at all. I've never even gotten close to this. Mm-hmm. Really creative level design, this one. And great music, too. Huh. You could beat him in two hits. Oh. I did not know you could do that. Okay. I might be able to time that. I might be able to get consistent with it if I practice a bit. Damn, are there really no skips in World 8? Got the Hammer Bros. But you're in a shell, so it's no problem. Just skip right past them. Oh, yeah, it's nothing. Oh, yeah, you need the blue shell for this level to go fast. You need it. Damn, you really can't go before that? There might be a time save right here. If you start on the left a bit more and then you start moving to the right before you go up the thing. Maybe the block is in the way. I think the block is in the way. Yeah, never mind. I'm sure a task would go around like this and then go like that to get more momentum. There's tiny time saves with each of these ones that he steps into. You could step closer into it. You run the risk of bumping your head and slowing yourself down, but you can get close. I guess the blocks don't slow you down. Oof, a bit of a bit of a time save right there. There's time saves all throughout this level, but this is really tough. This is really tough to save time on. Oof, yeah. This level is gonna be tough for a human to like really optimize. That's a task level for sure. You can play it optimized, but you have to be... Getting it consistent is... is mm -mm. With every, being perfect and being consistently perfect is going to be impossible. And I hate playing the water levels too. It's not fun.
Damn, he's lagging. There's no RNG in, in the areas that they fall in, right? They all fall in the same spot. The Zane, the Zane spiders. I don't know what they're called. That's what we call them. Like me and my brother. Ooh, I want to see what he does for this level. This is already way faster than I've ever gone. Okay. Fearless. This man's fearless. I had nightmares about this level. I remember having like nightmares about it on this area. Three statues of Bowser and the other castle has one big one. Really nice attention to detail. And look at the way his head goes on. Look at it. Look at his head. I love that. That's crazy. I've never even seen any videos of this game. I've just played it so many times that I know everything about it. His voice really echoes right there. This is so cool. I remember the first time I saw this, this was one of those magical gaming moments where I'm like, oh my God, it's so mysterious. Like I didn't know this was a thing. This level's surprisingly simple, actually, to start this off. It's a fairly simple level. It's really, really fun when you're a kid. This is, I, I would say, one of the most fun levels because of how, like, weird and special it is. If you're not speed, if you're not going fast, you don't know what there is ahead of you. It's kind of tricky. I wish they made it a bit more difficult, though. Man. I'm looking back at it, the creativity in these levels was way better than any of the new Mario games. Oh, how you can optimize this one. Holy sh... Bro, what? That's insane. I wonder how challenge mode works on that level. You know, the like the challenge where it's like you pause after you beat the game, pause, L, R, L, R, X, X, Y, Y. I wonder if challenge mode like works the same way where it stops you from going further down. That would be, that might be kind of tricky. I mean, I guess not if you know what you, if you have it all planned out, then no skips. There might be some skips in like the tasks or if they have a gl glitch version. This might be like glitchless or something. Ooh, he messed up. There's a time save right there. There might be, maybe, um, glitches. Oh. Time save. I wonder if there's like ace you can do in this game. I doubt it, but... Of course he gets it. There might be a way to trigger like the end, end credit scene way earlier or something like that. Who knows? This seems to be a pretty bulletproof game though from glitches. I don't recall ever really being able to glitch the game like that. Oh, these rocks are RNG. I'm almost positive. Damn, why is this guy lagging so much? Wait.
I guess that was intentional then. Yeah, you don't want the blue shell for these parts. Get to it, yeah. If you weren't running the whole time, that was a really tough part in the end if you don't have the star. There were times where you basically just get soft lock from winning because there's not enough space to jump. Yeah, you don't want the blue shell for, for like the later levels. I'm surprised you didn't get rid of it earlier. Ah, oh, yeah, auto scroller. Wait. He has a fire flower already. Why? Because didn't he spend some effort getting the, the previous fire flower? Thought he was just going to use that. And why would he do that if he's... Ah, I see. To get the checkpoint. Nice little way to get around that. Nice. Never thought about that. All you have to do is enter that area. That makes sense. Wow, you're showing off, bro. Don't play around me like that, bro. This ain't Tass. I want to know what they do for the Tass. I want to watch the Tass. And I want to see if there's any glitches. You Oh, okay. This music was really nice too. That was really on point. That was on point. That jump. I think the task might go to the very edge of the block before it can fall off and then run, get a little bit of a running start. That's how you do it. And uh, you can beat the final Bowser like that too, but it takes, it takes a bit more. I think you can actually literally jump over the final Bowser if you run fast enough. I think you can actually just straight up just jump over him. It's very rare that I did that. Usually I would just go for Fire Flower because it was super easy. But I think you can. I think I might have done that like two or three times. Final boss battle is surprisingly easy. It's kind of disappointing how easy it is. Especially considering how creative the whole rest of the game is. Oh, this is the level, man. This is the level. This level, it was such a... So cathartic to beat. Let's see if I do it the same way. I don't do that. That's definitely the more efficient way to do it. Yep, I do all this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I played this level so many times because... Even if, even when you beat it, this level still stays blue or whatever. Like it stays, like you're able to beat it over and over again. You're able to play this level as many times as you want, basically. So I played this level so many times, I can speed run this level for sure. And no, no shell? Yeah, no worries, bro. Damn. Is that really a time sit? Smart. Damn. That... Was that really... The best way of doing that? Don't tell me he's gonna beat it like this. I mean, you totally can. I can do all this. I would usually go through and get the star coins, but I can do all this. 
So much time in this level, in this uh, level two, like 800 seconds or whatever, or 900 or 800, something like that. I think it's 800 because I don't remember ever seeing more than 700 on the clock. So, and then up and then middle. Damn. Yeah, you don't need anything to beat it other than just yourself. Just come prepared with yourself. No need to bring a backpack or a pencil or nothing. And that giant statue in the back. Beautiful attention to detail. I'm gonna say the damsel in distress. The damn princess. Oh. Yeah, that is the fastest way. Other than if you have action replay, you could just do it a little faster, but yeah. And it's worth it to have Luigi for that part. You should have done Luigi. There's no difference. You should have done Luigi. Wait. Holy shit. Three hours? Oh, 100% speedrun. Um, yeah, no, I am watching that. If there's a task. Son of a bitch. Uh. Oh, it already opened a new tab. Super Mario Bros. DS Tass. Warps. Oh, yeah, yeah, warps because the. Let me go to timestamps. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hoo -hoo. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Wait. This has got to be a glitch. What is this? You can't move this fast with the... Damn, my man's playing in 60 frames a second. This is emulator. Yeah, of course. It has to be emulator, it's Tass. That's so weird. It's a relatively new strat. I guess. Oh. Yo. Nah, you're too weak and bro. No. It's not even fun to watch, bro. This is not fun to watch. This is pissing me off. did a front flip facing the screen. Nah, you're insane. Dude. Wait.
Wait. But isn't there a little window right here like we saw in the last one? Where you hit him and then the, there's a little window where he gets up where you can ground pound again right there. Like right there, you know? Dude, this is so smooth. This is straight 60 frames a second. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to go to the timestamps. I, I trust them. What glitch is that? It's like some double jump glitch. It's about time someone did a quicker route. Oh. Yeah, dude, I'm, I, 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 okay. Glitches. Son of a glitch. New Super Mario Brothers. Mario returned bigger than ever when Nintendo decided to update- Bro, I don't like this channel. Son of a glitch, they're so like, uh, they're so like family friendly. I don't like the way that like, bro, it's cringe. Son of a glitch. Bro, just do like glitches showcase or something like that. You know, just like classic platforming style of the games from which Mario became so popular in the first place. And while it's not the most broken game ever, all the graphical polish in the world isn't going to stop it from having a slight glitch or two or three. So let's oh, really? kick things off in World 1-1 where things are not completely as they see. Towards the end of World 1-1 is this Red Koopa Trooper. I exited and the plane if you of existence. The following actions, things are about to get pretty strange. Firstly, what we need to do is grab this green Koopa Trooper who's just off to the left of the screen. That's it, pick him up. The red Koopa Trooper walks back and forth on no, these brick blocks. I, I and see what's here's where the trickiness here. happens. That kind of makes sense. That kind of makes sense. There's, um, because you have intangibility in that moment. You have intangibility. And then I think, um, if it, if it's registered that you're on top of this block, right? That you're on top of this entity, but it, it, has it registered that it needs to move or that you're touching this entity, then it's kind of registered that you already touched it. So you can't already touch the entity that you've already touched. Something like that. I, I kind of get the logic here. I, I know what's happening. We need to time throwing this green shell at the last brick block when the red Koopa Trooper is just about to step on it. The time- now, There's a lot of ways to do this. You don't necessarily need to, you just touch something that's in in any kind of state like this or it doesn't, I don't even think it needs to be in this kind of state, but no, I think it, I think it does need to, I think it needs to be in this kind of state. I think they accounted for the other ones. Um, because in this state, when you touch it, it's supposed to have gone and, uh, it's in a different, it's in a different like game state. Basically, if you're intangible while you touch it, while you're touching it, the game has registered one thing, but it hasn't registered the other. It's registered that you've touched it and that your hitbox is a hit, it has hit its hitbox but it hasn't registered that, I don't know. But it makes sense. Timing for this is pretty hit and miss, so you may have to give it a couple of tries. This isn't like a terrible, like broken glitch or whatever. If you do it correctly, old red Koopa Trooper over here is now kind of invisible? No, that's not the right word. He's invulnerable? I don't know, he's just not doing much. He's Basically intangible, he's intangible. Mario now doesn't hurt the Koopa Trooper and the Koopa Trooper doesn't hurt Mario. But the Koopa Trooper is also not dead, so when it wakes up, now they're the best of friends. They can now just take casual walks with each other. It's so friendly. Absolutely nothing will hurt this Koopa That's really cool to actually see which one is, which one of the sprites is placed in front of the other. That's really interesting. I guess it makes sense because Mario has to go behind a lot of things, you know, like textures and things like that in the map. Trooper. Like, so even you know snow and things like that his feet have to go behind it you know using fire Makes mario sense. doesn't do a single thing oh. which is also a good job he doesn't hurt mario either here's a strange and visually comedic glitch you can check out in world 3-a towards the end of the stage is this green pipe and if you jump up in did we not just see them do that in the task 
to it, you'll go to this area with the water. Now, if you run towards the water and then just as you enter it, turn to go in the other direction, still holding left if you were going right, this will happen. Huh. Mario will now continue sliding backwards if you keep holding left, and this is just kind of funny to watch, really. Due to the confines of this area, you won't slide very far, but you will just get stuck against the screen, just sliding. Never done this. I mean, Never done this. wow. To end the glitch, all you have to do is just let go of holding any direction, and Mario returns to normal. A very simple to do and fun to watch glitch. The Mega Mushrooms seen throughout this game are a brand new addition to Mario's items. And they're supposed to be a one-shot deal that you use there and then whenever Mario touches them. However, if Mario touches an unbreakable block and the Mega Mushroom at the same time, that Mega Mushroom will then be put in Mario's mm. items. This is essentially like Mega Mushroom storage. What happens is there's not enough room above Mario's head for him to grow. That's not necessarily a glitch. That's just part of the game. You can't, if you do this in other areas, if you have action replay DS and you do this in other areas where you do, literally don't have the space to grow, um, it will be put back into your pocket. So the game just lets him keep it. It's a pretty difficult glitch to get down, but all you have to do is touch the unbreakable block and the Mega Mushroom on the same frame and then you'll keep it. Using Mega Mushrooms, we can perform a glitch in any of the first- I don't know if you can do it without, like, I didn't know you could do it unless there was some like glitch involved, but that seems like a safeguard that the developers put in place to prevent you from clipping into the map and stuff. Bowser Jr. fights. All we have to do is eat the Mega Mushroom and then keep attacking Bowser Jr. until it runs out. Just standing next to Bowser Jr. with the Mega Mushroom in effect, you can see that he does take some kind of damage or- Yeah, that's really interesting how they kind of expect the people to be able to do this kind of thing. So they like, program this in he just remains on his back and this is going to put him in a weird state maybe they the didn't maybe they didn't maybe they just it's just a, a property of like the mega mushroom hitbox interacting with him the mushroom finally runs out and bowser jr returns to normal when you take the next hit he'll end up on his back as expected now usually if mario jumps on bowser jr again while he's on his back that counts as a hit but because of the things we did with the mega mushroom those hits now don't count jump on him as much as you want but it's not going to do any damage the only way to hurt bowser jr now is to perform a ground pound this is wait when the makes up that's all it. Using Mega Mushrooms, we can perform a glitch in any of the first Bowser Jr. fights. All we have to do is eat the Mega Mushroom with the Mega Mushroom. This is gonna normal when you take Bowser Jr. Again, he'll end up on his back as expected. Now, usually if Mario jumps on Bowser Jr. Mega Mushroom, those hits now, that counts as a hit. But because of the things we did with the Mega Mushroom, those hits now don't count. Jump on him as much as you want, but it's not gonna do any damage. The only way to hurt Bowser Jr. now is to perform a ground pound. This is a pretty weird glitch, but thankfully it doesn't harm anything. And the only reason I can think that it occurs is the Mega Mushroom creates kind of an overflow of how many hits Bowser Jr. can take. No, he puts it puts Bowser Jr. into the other game state of like when later on when he's stronger, he needs to take that second hit, you know, when he slides in the shell, basically. I, I think it's putting him in like that kind of state, maybe or something like that. Usually when not performing this glitch, a ground because that's when this happens. This only happens from that, not from like other things like he doesn't get stunned and normally um, in the fight where he's just running and not sliding in his shell. Pound counts as two hits and that maybe somehow counteracts this glitch? I'm not entirely sure. While we're still hanging out with Bowser Jr, there's another glitch you can do in World 2, 3 and World 5 castles. In the last phase of these Bowser Jr fights, he'll jump upwards. If you can bounce Mario off Bowser Jr's head at the peak of this jump, you can get out of bounds. Usually at the end of these fights, oh. you can see what's called an Irish shot, which is shaped like Mario's head, which closes in the center of the screen but if you end the fight out of bounds it'll close closes on mario the top left or right hand corners and you'll barely see it this glitch isn't anything too crazy but it's interesting yeah. to know that it can be done it's not really While a glitch we're still on the topic there's yet another glitch that involves bowser jr in fights where bowser jr is wearing a bandana if you throw a green shell at him while he runs towards you he'll like that like that yeah on his back and he's still wearing the bandana He's stunned. That's that's what it is. And Dana. However, if you pick up the green shell once he's thrown it at you and then wait for Bowser Jr. to get inside his shell, then fire the green shell back at him. Now, when Bowser Jr. is flipped on his back, suddenly, no bandana. But then, the minute you jump on him, the bandana is back. This is some kind of crazy magic bandana. What kind of witch? Uh, I see why. Because when he's in his shell, they just delete the 
or they make the uh, texture of the bandana invisible because they don't want it like clipping through the ground. See how it's like not like perfect? To jump on it when Bowser Jr. is flipped on his back, suddenly his shell. So like in this state right here, they want it to be like, oh, he's completely inside. So they just make the bandana disappear. That makes sense. Then fire the green shell back. The minute you jump on him, the bandana is back. Mm -hmm. This is some kind of crazy magic bandana. What kind of witchcraft is this? That if makes the sense. the bandana was supposed to keep Bowser Jr.'s identity safe, well, we all saw your face and in your most vulnerable moment. It's not meant to keep his identity safe. Everyone knows who it is. That's... See, this is why I don't like uh, people, this is why I don't like this channel and these kinds of people who just like read off a script, they just like, uh, like I see these people on like Fiverr or whatever, it's like one person will write the script for the video, one person will get the animations, one person will edit the video, one person will get the gameplay, one person will do the voiceover, like it's a bunch of different people so that way you can divide up labor and churn out these videos, but as a result, nobody actually knows what they're talking about and the wrong footage ends up with the wrong voiceover and things like that. And there's oversights. There's more oversights in these videos. Bro, how about you make a, a son of a glitch video for your own channel? Because there's more oversights in these videos than there are in the games that you talk about. In World 2-3, you'll reach this point with a piranha plant and two flippers that face each other. If it's you can, I, I knew these were like really sketch. You know. Drop Mario to the floor below and then try to get him to stand where the two flippers meet, some very strange things will happen. Basically, Mario will be stuck on the spot and be frozen in a weird pose, like this one where he's standing with the leg. This whole level is really, it's ambitious to do things like, like this that are like actually moving and don't like push your character or whatever to give you like full autonomy in these Mario games. That's a good leg. Kind of looks like he's squaring up to the piranha plant. You want a piece of this? I hope you like Italian, because that's what I'm made this of. This is foreshadowing Smash Bros. Or if you ground pound, Mario will just be sat there hoping he doesn't get eaten. If you ask me, it's all flipping crazy. How's my butt look? Does it look good? In World 8-3, you're going to find these giant bubbles, which look kind of gross, but there's a glitch involved, so stick with it. Now, this is kind of tricky to get right, but you need Mario to bounce directly on top of this bubble to the point where he can no longer move away from it. What happens is these bubbles take away any control from you once you bounce off Damn, look them. His feet. And if you get Mario bouncing dead on the top of them, he's going to hit the ceiling, come back down, bounce, and just keep bouncing so forever. Stuck, this glitch serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever, but uh, enjoy the up and down ride of this one. It's not a glitch, bro. It's not a glitch. This is an oversight. In World 4-A, you can find this room with a P-switch and a whole ton of blocks. Now just go nuts breaking blocks. I don't mind him putting it in this video. I don't mind him... because. No one's going to watch a video like, oh, developer oversights for this game. You can say glitches and put everything, you know, in that one video. It doesn't matter if somebody somehow differentiates like glitch from exploit. Like, bro, put it all in the video. But don't explicitly say this glitch is a, bro, it's just an oversight including the ones all around the P-Switch, and you're gonna find that this guy just floats in the air. Now, this isn't normal P-Switch behavior, because in That's not that weird. World 5C, the exact same scenario crops up, and this P-Switch will fall to the ground with nothing underneath it. So, either this P-Switch is magic, or somebody- That's not that weird. That, that happens in other places in the game too, I think. Some P-Switches have gravity, some P-Switches don't. I mean, bro, every P-Switch that's upside down doesn't affect- is not affected by gravity like that. Nintendo forgot to program a thing. It's most definitely the second one. But then in the World 1 castle, you have this dry bones and his problem is definitely not gravitational. If you can jump on his head and break him up so his body is on the moving platform, but his head is on the stationary platform, when he pulls himself back together, his head is gonna drop through the stationary platform floor. I think this calls for an action replay. That I knew you could is do a that. head spinning glitch right I there. I think I remember oh, doing geez. that maybe. I felt that one. <clears throat> Here's a random glitch in the World 3 Ghost House. At the beginning of the stage, you'll find this question mark switch and that activates some stairs just to the left. Normally, when you tap the bottom screen item, it'll drop straight down to the ground. However, if you stand underneath these stairs and then activate the item, it'll now slowly drop down huh. towards the ground through the stairs. Now That's you weird. can do this with fire flowers and every single kind of mushroom, but the most interesting mushroom to do it with is the mega mushroom. Once it's finished slowly descending through the wall, once it hits the ground, it just bounces back and forth. I had no idea going through walls was so exciting. I guess we can find out firsthand. Bro, he literally, did he not watch this part of the footage? Where was it? Um, 
simple to do and fun to watch glitch. The mega mushrooms seen throughout this game. Did he not watch it bounce? Game are a brand new addition to Mario's items. However, if Mario touches yeah, an look. unbreakable block and the mega mushroom at the same time, that mega. Did he not see that? Is he just making this shit up? Down towards once it's finished. Well, dude, no, not once it's finished. It like starts bouncing. Dude, it bounces away from you anyways. That's the property of the Mega Mushroom. It doesn't want you to get it. Finish slowly descending through the wall. Once it hits the ground, it just bounces back and forth. I had no idea going through walls was so exciting. I had no idea. You love to talk about games you know nothing about. I guess we can find out firsthand. Is that like get people who just who understand the game? How hard is that, bro? This video gets these videos get millions of views. Just make videos on like all you gotta do is find someone like me. Go into your comment section. Hey, we're making a pin the comment. Our next video is going to be on this. If you know about this game and you want to work with us on the script, join us on Discord. How hard There's is that? There's a couple of glitches that do exactly that. In World 1-4, you'll reach this point with the Red Cooper Trooper. Pick him up and watch him go as he destroys all the bricks on the way down to the 1-Up block. When you see the 1-Up, stand on this block, jump up in the air and ground pound. Keep holding down and then jump immediately afterwards mm. and a hidden block should appear. If you now let go of down on the D-pad, you'll be pushed through the wall. You've probably seen this exact kind of glitch in all the Mario classics. The same kind of glitch can be done in World 2 Castle. If you reach this area with the Wrecking Ball and the Bullet Build turret, you can just duck in this corner and then jump. If you release down on the D-pad, at the right time, Mario will be pushed through the wall yet again. Pretty sweet. If you've now got a taste for this sliding through walls craziness, there's a couple of other glitches you should learn about. These next few glitches all involve the challenge mode, which is a mode of the game which you cannot travel backwards through a world. After finishing the game, if you press start on the map screen and press yeah. LR, LR, X, X, Y, Y, you should see this message for the challenge mode. With challenge mode now in effect, head to far forward, that. otherwise you'll have to restart. Oh, okay. I thought people were like going back to watch the LR, LR, X, X, Y, Y. I guess some people may not know that. We found that out way later on. This might be a thing that people, that people actually do in speedruns, maybe. See this message for the challenge mode. With challenge mode now in effect, head to world one, two. Because of the nature of challenge mode and the fact that you cannot scroll the screen backwards through mm. a world, you can create these tiny little spaces that Mario can jump into. You have to be very careful not to scroll the screen too far forward, otherwise you'll have to restart the stage. But if you get it just right, Mario can fit inside this gap and keep jumping till he's off screen. Now you can just keep running to the right, but eventually you'll get stopped because you're not supposed to be in this area. So this isn't exactly the most useful version of this glitch, but there are more interesting versions of it. For instance, if you try this same glitch out in World 6-4, once Mario gets to the top of this gap, he'll continue just sliding through the wall. Best thing about this is unlike World 1-2, you'll actually pop out at the other end. The best version of this glitch can be seen in World 2-5. Towards the end of this stage is a secret room where a star coin can be found. If we now scroll the screen just enough that we create this gap at the top of the room, we next need to use this block hopper Oh, that's consistent. You just go all the way to the end. ...to get up there. The best thing to do is just keep jumping until you get lucky and get pushed in the gap. If you're successful, Mario will now slide to victory and pass the flagpole. You'll eventually come to a stop as the screen locks to the right-hand side. That's cool. I didn't know you could do this. I, I've done this in action replay, but I've, I, it was just me going way over the border. Side, but all you have to do is keep jumping and eventually you'll end up standing on an invisible block. Then you can hang out in an area you're not really supposed to play around in and then just finish the stage as there's not really an awful lot to do here. But it's always fun to break the rules. Our final version of this glitch happens in World 8.3 and it's very tricky to get right. Yet again, we need to create this small gap between the screen edge and the wall and it's very difficult not to get pushed to the right. If you somehow manage to pull this off, keep swimming to the left and go through the giant eel that's trying to eat you. I definitely recommend using a fire flower for this as I managed 
managed to get hurt twice on the way to the gap. Once you're in the gap, keep Poor jumping shell. until Mario is off screen. Now that you're off screen, the giant eel will follow you as he's programmed to follow Mario wherever he goes. You can keep swimming all the way to the right and then to the end of the stage, but you're gonna hit a dead end as there's nowhere else to go. You're kind of stuck here. You'll just see the eel slowly leave the screen and that's it. All you can do is wait for the time to run out or pause and exit the world. Our next glitch occurs in World Force hmm. 6. For this really simple glitch, all you need to do is ride Ooh, I like this level. to these three green pipes with piranha plants poking out of them. Now all you have to do is stand here and wait in this spot until the timer reaches 140. Once it reaches 140, you can start moving through the stage again, and then from here, take a big run and jump to the right. And then, no, your eyes are not deceiving you, Mario is walking around in the air. From here, do not go too far to the left, otherwise you'll fall right in the drink. But by all means, continue heading to the right and enjoy running around on absolutely nothing. Although eventually, once you reach this area, you'll be somehow teleported to somewhere I don't know, and you'll be stuck. I have no idea what happened here, I was just, that was it. I was done, I was done. I was able to move to the left and the right and catch it with Dory and see what these guys were doing. You're just invisible. Go through the pipe. But uh, yeah, that was it. But it's a really simple glitch to oh, do. Oh, and Andy's I'm intangible. I, I assume he's walking through these guys. A lot of fun to mess around with. This next glitch is a fun one. In the World 4 Ghost House, you can find these spinning platforms that move Mario from area to area. Oh, of course when there's Mario a glitch is these. on one of these platforms, it freezes everything in game. But this also works if Mario just jumps on it for a mm. frame or two and then jumps right back off again. I feel like I knew about this somehow. I might have done it, maybe, but... So this now freezes everything in the world, which means the boos don't move. Whenever you touch a coin block, the coin just pops out, but this nothing happens. This is really happens. familiar. And these brick yeah. blocks, well, they do break, but the debris doesn't fall to the ground. If you're Fire Flower Mario, you can shoot fireballs, but they'll just hang in the air, just frozen in time. Look at these boos. They seem to be getting a kick out of that trick. You like that one, huh? Look at that face. Funnily enough, any blocks with power-ups in them don't do anything, so that's uh, really useful. If Mario touches any of the boos, then the glitch ends and everything returns back to normal. Likewise, the same thing will happen if Mario jumps on the spinning platforms that caused this whole mess Damn. in the first place. It's a tricky one to pull off, but it's a fun glitch nonetheless, and I like how just nothing works right anymore. Hitboxes. In the World Fort Castle, you meet this Goomba who turns into a giant Goomba. Yeah, it's a pretty neat trick. And here's where our next glitch comes into effect. Before before this fight begins, make sure you have a Mega Mushroom stand in the- I would do that with Action Replay, I would get the Mega Mushroom and fight him with it. ...this spot and then use it. Now all you have to do is jump to the right to enter the cutscene- You know, I actually have a glitch. I have one to contribute. Um, there's this one level where you, um, well it only works with Action Replay, I guess. You know, with Action Replay you can set, up, set it up where you always have the star, basically, right? The thing is, you can't have the star and have the Mega Mushroom on at the same time. If you get a star and then activate a Mega Mushroom, it puts you in the Mega Mushroom animation. Does it give you the sparkles? And it brings on the Goomba, and depending on the timing of... Yeah, so you get the sparkles, and I kind of was looking at it, I'm like, is there some rainbowness to it? But it's the sparkles are there no matter what. However, there's areas of the game, particularly one area, I think it's in World 7, um, or maybe World... World four or something like that maybe six but it's an area where you know you go up the uh the vines you go into this area where there's like a bunch of coins maybe a star coin but i think it's just a bunch of coins and then you jump off like the clouds and there's no like pipe or anything you just jump off and you know like the curtain the black curtain goes over the screen and then you fall through and you're kind of intangible for a second there you're like flashing uh and then you know you land on the platforms i think it might be the level where there's it's like the red um expanding and contracting platforms i think it might be those i think that might be the level but essentially if you go up to the top if you go up in that top area you get somebody else should get the footage of this but you go up into that top area um with action replay ds and you have the star basically active the whole time you give yourself a mega mushroom you go into this state you're not rainbow right and then you jump down it makes you come down into the world back into like the normal world area giant and with the rainbow effect on you and it looks so weird it looks like really trippy it looks like it's it's you could really tell how saturated like and uh overpowering the rainbow effect is it's like seizure inducing at that level bro and it's huge and it's really cool and uh, i would do that trick over and over again it's an it's a nice little glitch if you if somebody can find it then check it out 
where you jump and how you land, you're gonna get some pretty interesting results. For instance, you may see the Goomba just waddle onto screen halfway in the air. Or he may not appear on screen at all. The transformation of him getting big will just happen in the air somewhere. And then he'll gracefully float down to the ground. I just love how dumb this glitch looks and every time you try it will be a different result, so go nuts. While we're still talking about this Goomba fight, if you have a Mega Mushroom, just use it at any point in the fight and then wait for it to run out. When it does eventually run out, you'll notice that the boss music for this fight doesn't actually return and you'll be treated to a brand new soundtrack. Huh. It's called Clumpy Clumpy Goomba Feet. It's uh, never going to make any top 10s, that's for sure. At the end of World ah, 7, you'll one. fight Lucky Thunder, and there's another glitch in this boss too. You'll need Dude, see how creative they were? Shell power up for this glitch and They're so they were so creative with this game. What you have to do is hit Lucky Thunder twice in succession very fast. It's kind of tricky, and it will take a bit of time, but it's very possible. Also, this has to be done on the first and second hits. If you do it on the third, obviously, you'll kill Lucky Thunder. Ooh. That's tough. If you manage to pull this off, Lucky Thunder will now freeze in place. I guess the game doesn't expect you to hit him so quickly and doesn't actually know what to do from this point onwards. I guess. But just because he's frozen in place doesn't mean he won't hurt you. Ah oh man, I almost feel bad for the guy. Can you hit him? Maybe I should just put him out of his misery. Yeah. Ah, he goes on to a better place. Our final glitches happen at the final boss. It kind of makes sense, really. The first glitch with the final boss is to do with beating Bowser out of order. The game fully expects expects you to beat Bowser Jr. and then Bowser, but using a fire flower you can take out Bowser, well, with relative ease it may take some practice, but you can take him out first. Some practice. With Bowser gone, finish off Bowser Jr. and then you'll notice that the music for this boss battle keeps on playing. The trigger for the music to end is when you push the big red button and drop Bowser into the lava below, but having already beaten him with fireballs, just beat Bowser Jr. and then you can run around until your heart's content. The wait, 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 wait. If the trigger for it to end is for you to click the button, then why does it matter what order you beat him in? You could beat Bowser Jr. and then beat Bowser and then just chill here and not click the button and won't the music keep playing? I don't understand, bro. I don't understand. Like, if, if this is... Don't say this is the trigger for the music to end then. The second glitch in this fight also- if you don't know what you're talking about, which you clearly don't know what you're talking about. You don't know anything about this game. You don't know what you're talking about. Don't speak on it. Get somebody else to speak on it involves beating Bowser first and also having a Mega Mushroom. Wait until there's just one more hit for Bowser Jr. to be taken down. When Bowser Jr. throws a green shell at you, keep this shell and then wait till Bowser Jr. is close to where Peach is. With Bowser Jr. now on his back, quickly mm. use the Mega Mushroom and then jump off Bowser Jr. while still holding jump and you'll be able to reach Peach at the top of the room. Now just wait for the Mega Mushroom to end and with Bowser Jr. and Bowser gone, you can just stand next to- Yeah, whoever edited this is- they, I love how they put the music here. I love how they put the end music right here even though it would not be playing. Peach, well, she's kind of saved, I guess. I mean, I don't think this is how the game is supposed to end. Ah, well, that's the end of that and some cool and quirky glitches you can try out in New Super Mario Brothers. And if you like this episode, why not check out the rest of the series? I don't like this episode. There was a guy who, who used to do Sound of a Glitch. I don't think this is like the same voice that it always was. But I remember like a different voice doing it, like a lower pitch voice. And he was way cooler. Like he actually knew about the games. Um, I think he might've done Mario Sunshine.